Snake Later here, and you guys really did enjoy my first video in the Wipeout Discussions genre, where I basically talked about all the games in the franchise and ranked them in a tier list based on my personal opinion. So as I promised at the end of that video, today we're going to do all 26 individual ships in HD Fury and Omega Collection. Now once again, thank you to everybody who commented, replied, both on YouTube and on Twitter, about my previous video. Let me know what your personal opinion was on each of the games. I thoroughly enjoyed reading all your replies and comments and discussing your opinion opinions with you. So like I said, today we're going to do the ships, as I promised. Now, just to give a quick background about this tier list, I made it about two to three years ago where I was trying to rank the ships as objectively as I possibly could. Bear in mind, this is not official. There is no official tier list for the ships in this game. I purely made it for fun. But after looking at the leaderboards online, there's some degree of accuracy I've found in my methods here, and this tier list is somewhat reflective of the current meta. Now, just as obviously as a forewarning, use the ship you like best. This tier list is just for fun. You can use the best ship in the game, but if you don't like it, you're not going to enjoy playing the game. Play for fun, use the ship you like best. For example, I use Piranha and Phantom Class, which is definitely not the most viable option, but for me it's the most fun. Let's just talk about how this tier list is going to be structured. Now, I'm doing this tier list based on Phantom Class. The reason why I'm doing that is because I believe Phantom Class has the greatest diversity in ship viability. Venom, Flash and Rapier tend to have a lower vi diversity and viability because really you want to be using ships that have a high speed stat such as Piranha, Icarus, Tigron or Triacus. I'll delve a bit more into that reasoning later when I go through the importance of the stats. But just to go through the assumptions for this tier list, now the assumptions are what are sort of like the major rules. The first assumption is the two people competing against each other are of equal skill level. So they know how to handle the ships, they've mastered the air brakes, they've mastered side shifting, they know the tracks inside and out, and they can perform all the advanced tech such as barrel rolls, turbos, shortcuts. That way, the real difference comes down to the ship choice rather than the pilot themselves. Secondly, there's no weapons. Weapons introduce too much random variability into the game. They can heavily skew a race in the favour of one person or another, regardless of their skill level. So because of that, we're doing this under time trial conditions or speed lap pure racing where the weapons are basically turned off. Finally, we're doing this on neutral tracks for the time being. Now, what I consider a neutral track is one that's not particularly difficult, but not particularly easy. Easy tracks are like Vinny K and Alpha Pass. Those easy tracks tend to have a lot of straightways, so they favour speedy ships more than the high handling ships, whereas Sepenko Climb and Modesto Heights, which are difficult, tend to favour more ships with more handling or more thrust. So neutral tracks offer the best balanced playing ground, and my personal best example I can think of is the Ampersim where speedy ships can get up to top speed, but high handling ships are great because of some of the sharp corners. So that's sort of the parameters for this tier list, and now I'm going to actually go how I've scored the ships. Now I'm not doing this based on personal opinion. I'm trying to, I've done this as objectively as I possibly could, so I'm scoring the ships out of 100%. Now just to briefly go off, a t on, off on a tangent here, if you are interested in the hidden stats in HD Fury, a long time ago a Wipeout Zone user called Big Snake made this. This is a spreadsheet that has all of the hidden stats in the game for both HD ships and Fury ships on Venom, Flash, Rapier, and Phantom Class. I highly implore you check out this spreadsheet because it'll help you to better understand the hidden stats behind all the teams. A lot of them are basically the same, like these stats here, but the stats that change between speed classes are highlighted even blue or red. And this includes acceleration cap, which is essentially your thrust, top speed, which is literally the top speed of the ship, the turning amount and the ground grip are basically your handling. These change between speed classes, so once again, do check this out. So now I'm just going to quickly go over the scoring for all the teams in this, in this tier list. So like I said, I've scored them out of 100%, which was the best way I could find to score them. And I've given each stat a weighting percentage as to how important they are. Now remember how before I said in Venom, Flash and Rapier class you want to use ships with a high speed stat? That's because essentially when you're racing in games and in real life 
The main objective is to set the fastest race time possible. Because of that, the stat that contributes to that kind of time the most is speed. Speed is so important, the faster you're going, the faster your race time is going to be. So for speed, I've given it the highest percentage weighting. Now in HD Fury particularly, I find that thrust and handling tend to be as equally as important as each other. They're not as important as speed, but they definitely make quite a difference, so I've given them an equal percentage rating. So let's go through the breakdown, shall we? I'm going to bring up this document here. So here's the percentage rating I've given the stats. Speed, since it's the most important, gets 50% maximum score. Handling and thrust get maximum scores of 25%. And up here is the stat intervals you'll find in the main menu when you're choosing your ships. So what I've done is I've simply divided the maximum score by these intervals, which is 8. So 50 divided by 8 equals 6.25. So for the higher the stat interval is on the main menu, the higher the score is. Now you'll notice 60 is not on here because if I included 60, th these numbers would not be equally divisible and they would not total 100% overall. So if a ship gets 60, it scores 0. Simple as that. So for speed, the intervals go up in 6.25. So the lowest is 6.25 obviously, and the highest you can get is 50. Handling and thrust, the lowest is 3.125, the highest is 25. So this is literally the amount of points each vehicle can score in each stat category. And once we've figured out how much they've scored in each category, they're added together and that gives us a total percent. The higher the total percent, the higher the tier for the ship. So that's how that works. So. Without further ado, let's just get straight into it. Now I'm just going to bring up my score sheet here, one second. And I think well, the way we're going to do this, we're going to start at the bottom with H tier and work our way up. We'll rank all the ships first and then I'll have a quick discussion about each one of them afterwards and we'll go from there. So starting in H tier, with the lowest score possible of 37.5% is Triacus HD. In G tier, there's three ships that equally scored 43.75%, which are Kyrex HD, uh, Goteki 45 HD, and Oricom HD. In F tier, with equal scores of 50%, is Piranha HD, Pfizer HD, AG Systems HD, EGX HD. Mirage HD and last but not least is where can I find it? Where are you hiding? There it is. Oh, sorry, Harimau HD. Gosh, that was a real brain fart moment. All of these teams scored 50%. Next in E tier, all by its own, with a total score of 53.125%, is Oricon Fury. Or by its lonesome in E tier. Now for D tier, we have two ships, each scoring 56.25%. Triacus Fury, Asagai HD. C tier, with scores of 59.375%, are Goteki 45 Fury, Piranha Fury, EGX Fury. Mirage Fury, and last but not least, Kyrex Fury. In B tier, another ship all on its lonesome is Icarus HD, with a total score of 62.5%. Now into A tier, these ships scored a really good 65.625%. You're probably going to see this coming. It is Faisal Fury, AG Systems Fury, Asagai Fury, Harimau Fury, and Tigron. Now, S tier, with scores of higher than 68%, I feel like this may have been obvious to the pros. We have Icarus Fury and Van Uber. So there you go. This is my tier list for all the ships in the game. So let's just briefly talk about them, shall we? Now, if you go on the actual leaderboards in the Omega Collection and go to Time Trial Phantom Class 
and look at all the tracks in that category, you'll generally find these two ships are always in top 10. Without a doubt, these two ships are the best for time trial. Now it is still track dependent. Van Uber tends to hold real records on technical circuits such as Sol 2, um, Modesto Heights as well. This ship dominates technical circuits because it's got really good balance in all three of the most important stats and obviously very low shielding. Icarus has 100 in the most important stat of speed, so it scores a full 50% there. Now, that's not to say these two ships are the be-all end-all. It's not the case if you want to use these ships all the time because they're glass cannons, so in actual racing settings these are very difficult to use without being eliminated. I would say overall the Icarus is definitely more dominant than the Vanuba because of its speed, but because it's so difficult to handle this ship, it's got very strange handling on Phantom Class. It makes it very hard to use, and I personally struggle to use Icarus on Phantom Class or even any of the other speed classes personally. But that's just because I prefer ha heavy handling ships. So yeah, these two ships are always capable of world record. They're always capable of getting a rank one time. Ships in A tier, these are definitely your best choices for racing and time trial, generally speaking. They're very much capable of top 10 times and in quite a few cases it's actually somewhat easy to get world record times with them, but that is also again track dependent. For example, I believe on Sabenko Climb Reverse in second place is an AG System Fury. It's so close. And generally speaking, there's a lot of Fizar times as well. Referring back to actually the HD settings ship, uh, stat, stat sheet, sorry, not ship. Um, these ships tend to have very high ground grip as well, with high handling, which gives them very direct steering, which is very favourable for Phantom Class. So for example, if you skip down to Phantom Class and look at ground grip, Fizar has the highest of 8.6, AG Systems has 8, etc, etc. These ships tend to have high ground grip. Now we don't know, sadly, the stats for Tigron and Vanuba because this spreadsheet was made before they were released. But honestly, if you look at the actual statistics in the menus, you can make some assumptions as to what their actual hidden stats are like. The only real one we can't determine is ground grip. So yeah, these ships are definitely capable of world record. They may not get it as frequently as these two though. B tier, Icarus HD on its own. The Icarus HD is definitely one of the most valuable ships for the HD category because it's essentially just a slightly inferior version of the Icarus Fury in that sense. However, I generally find the ship easier to fly because it's slightly heavier in its handling. And that does, once again, draw back to the point of pick the ship that works best for you. You may not like ships that have very high grip or high handling, and then in that case, these teams may not necessarily be the ones for you. And you may actually do even better in a different tier ship that has a lower handling. C tier ships, I would definitely consider are viable for top 10s time trials, but you're more likely to get top 30 with these. Now I've done a lot of time trials in Piranha Fury and Piranha HD because Piranha is my favourite team in the game. But generally speaking my times are usually top 30, top 20 and some rare cases are top 10 with the Piranha. You can definitely set some very fast times with these ships and in some very rare cases you can even set a world record with them. But in order to do so you're going to really have to push yourself and do well. D tier, Asagai HD is definitely really good. It's a great ship for single race. High handling, decent speed, it's definitely one of the stronger HD ships. Triacus Fury, now Triacus is an oddball. It's got it's had the biggest buff compared to its HD counterpart. It got an overall score buff of 18.75%. Most of the other teams only scored an extra 9 or 15% based on compared to their HD Fury. The HD counterpart, should I say, sorry. Dracus, however, is very difficult to use in Phantom Class. I'd argue it's even harder than these two. I definitely think this is more of a Venom and Flash ship, more than a Phantom ship, or Eliminator ship as well, because of its high shield. Now, Oricom, that was interesting when I first did this ranking. I actually really enjoyed the Oricom Fury, because Oricom, if we find it here, has an 8.6 in ground grip, so it's got very direct steering ring. But it's also heavy handling. It's got great speed as well at 90. So it's interesting to me. Now, of course, since the speed and ha the not the speed, the thrust and handling are quite low, it really holds the ship back 
which is why it's sort of scored an E tier, but I personally really do like Oricon Fury for Phantom class. Generally speaking, I tend to do best in it, but I don't race it that often, but I'm planning on changing that soon. F tier, which is the, has the most ships in the, any category on this tier list. These are probably one of the more, some of the more viable ships for the HD category, and they're definitely great for single racing, but for time trial, they're somewhat outclassed by the Fury ships. Now, of course, this does bring up the argument, are the Fury ships really superior to the HD ships? If you ask me, and many pros, no. The Fury ships feel very different to the HD ships, to either the benefit or detriment of some players. Generally speaking, in some cases, I like Goteki 45, but I actually prefer the HD variant, and I generally do better in the HD variant compared to the Fury variant. So again, this comes down to the, the opinion, not the opinion, but the statement of, use the ship that works best for you. This is not official, this is not necessarily fact. It is somewhat accurate though, based on the current leaderboards. G tier are definitely okay for Phantom Racing. Then probably not going to be as good as these ships. Now, arguments could be made for the Piranha being lower because it's got very poor thrust and handling, but good speed. I obviously argue against that. And it's just based on the stat scoring I managed to get. G tier, like I said, they're good for Phantom Racing, but they're not as good as these lot. And obviously, sadly, according to this tier list, the bottom of the barrel is the HD Triacus. It's essentially just an inferior Piranha HD. It's got 16 thrust and handling, so it scores 0 there. It's only got a 19 speed compared to the Piranhas 100. So, yeah, that's my tier list. Like I said, this is just for fun, it's not official, but it's somewhat accurate from what I can tell. Now, if you're willing to argue against this tier list, I do heavily implore you go and wipe out Omega Collection, go into the time trial leaderboards for Phantom Class, and just look at the top 10, top 20, or top 30 times. In most circumstances, you'll find at least the C tier ships and above. You will occasionally find, though, some of the lower tier ships up there, because, again, at the end of the day, pilot skill is the most important factor overall. For example, one of the, I can't remember which track it is, but one of the world records is held by Goteki 45 HD by my friend, um, uh, previously known as Isis Peanut, now known as Pigeon. He's actually got world record with a Goteki 45 HD. So that really goes to show that, like I said, this tier list is not 100% accurate. At the end of the day, your skill level is more important than the team you use. Now, before we end up, finish off here, I'm going to bring up this spreadsheet again. And we're going to go here. So here is the actual score system I've used. You can see all the tiers here, all the scores, the individual score for each stat, and the difference between the Fury and the HD ships. Like this uses the exact same score system, and this gives you a broad overall idea of what the ships are like on this tier list. If you would like them to be ranked individually, here you go. This top table is the tier list for all the Fury ships, and the bottom ones for all the HD ships. Now, I have lumped Tigron and Van Uber into the Fury ship, uh, the Fury ship tier list, because even though they're technically classed as HD ships by model. Statistically speaking, they're balanced around the Fury ships, so that's why they're in this tier list up here. So have a good look at this, and this gives you a good idea of comparing ship to ship in the most balanced view possible. And then when you put them all together, you get this tier list here. Okay guys, well that's it. So like I said, I heavily implore you check out this hidden spreadsheet here for all the hidden stats in the game. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And this tier list here, I actually made on tiermaker.com, so I'm also going to leave a link to it in the description below. And I actually would I like you guys to do, now that I've ranked the ships based on their stats, I want you guys to go onto this tier list, rank the ships based on your personal opinion. Which ones do you like best? Which ones do you use best? Which ones do you perform best with? And if you want to, take a screenshot of your tier list, tag me on Twitter, and I'll be more than happy to see it. And I'll be more than happy to discuss anything with you. My Twitter tag is at SnakeNator1, so like I said, feel free to tag me, and if you haven't already, give me a follow, that'd be great, and I'll post some more Wipeout stuff on there. Let me know your thoughts on this video, uh, what you agree with, what you disagree with, 
what you're willing to argue. I'm more than happy to have some constructive discussions with you guys, especially after my previous video where I really enjoyed chatting to you guys in the comments section. Next, really, I want you to decide the next Wipeout Discussions video. Leave some ideas down below and I'll have a look at them and then maybe in the future we'll get around to exploring those ideas in future videos. Again, a massive thank you to everybody who's watched. Thank you for commenting and I hope to speak to you soon. See you in a bit.